Hello, YouTube family. Today, we're diving into the world of 90s television with a heartfelt tribute to the beloved actors from the iconic show In the House, which graced our screens from 1995 to 1999. While we reminisce about the laughter, drama, and unforgettable moments that this series brought into our lives, we'll also take a moment to pay tribute to the talented actors who, sadly, are no longer with us. Their contributions to the show left an indelible mark on the landscape of 90s pop culture, and today we'll celebrate their lives and the legacy they've left behind. So grab your popcorn, settle into your favorite spot, and join us on this journey down memory lane. We'll explore the lives and careers of these incredible actors, sharing anecdotes, behind-the-scenes moments, and, of course, some of the most memorable scenes from In the House. If you're a fan of classic TV, 90s nostalgia, or simply enjoy a good dose of heartfelt storytelling, you're in the right place. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and let us know in the comments your favorite memories from In the House and the actors who made it unforgettable. Get ready for a trip back to the 90s as we celebrate the lives of the In the House actors who left us too soon. Without further ado, let's jump into the magic of In the House 1995 to 1999, actors who left a lasting impression. Stay tuned. Isabel Sanford. Isabel Sanford portrayed Nana in the In the House TV series. Isabel Sanford, 86, the actress renowned for her role as the enduring matriarch on the sitcom the Jeffersons, passed away on July 9th at a New York hospital. Her health declined following preventive surgery on a neck artery 10 months ago. The Jeffersons aired on CBS from 1975 to 1985, earning Ms. Sanford an Emmy Award for Best Actress in a Comedy Series. The show, a spin-off of All in the Family, featured Ms. Sanford and Sherman Hemsley, as a black couple residing near the bigoted Archie Bunker. All in the Family was a groundbreaking show addressing racism in a comedic format. In The Jeffersons, Ms. Sanford portrayed Louise Wheezy Jefferson, expressing exasperation with her husband George's foibles and schemes. George's successful dry cleaning business enabled the family to move into a luxurious Manhattan skyscraper accompanied by the theme song, Moving On Up. Born in New York, Ms. Sanford began performing in her teens against her mother's wishes. Despite sneaking out to sing in nightclubs, her notoriety forced her to confess to her mother. She won third place in an Apollo Theater amateur contest. After marrying and having three children, she became the primary breadwinner, working as a key punch operator at the New York City Welfare Department during the day and pursuing acting at night with the American Negro Theater and other groups. She secured several off-Broadway roles. Following her husband's death, she took her children to Hollywood in the early 1960s to pursue a film career. Her notable role was in Stanley Kramer's Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, 1967 playing the disapproving maid Tilly in the interracial love story between Sidney Poitier and Catherine Houghton. This role led to her recurring role on All in the Family. Reflecting on the show, Ms. Sanford said, I watched the first episode of that, and I didn't like it. I didn't like the background. I didn't like the way they dressed. I didn't like the way Archie Bunker talked about black people. But I decided to watch the next episode anyway, to see if I could determine why they would allow this trash to be on the air, and I found myself falling down laughing. Post The Jeffersons, she engaged in stage and television work in Los Angeles, making cameo appearances in shows like Cybill, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and Roseanne. In recent years, she lent her voice to The Simpsons, and appeared in commercials for Denny's Restaurants and retailer Old Navy. Survivors include three children, seven grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. Isabel Sanford and Sherman Hemsley portrayed Louise and George Jefferson in the popular sitcom, which aired on CBS from 1975 to 1985. Sherman Hemsley. 
Sherman Hemsley portrayed the character Buster in the In the House TV series. Hemsley passed away at his residence in El Paso, Texas, on July 24, 2012, at the age of 74, succumbing to superior vena cava syndrome, a complication associated with lung and bronchial carcinomas. He had a malignant mass on one of his lungs, prompting chemotherapy and radiation, as recommended in the El Paso County, Texas, medical examiner's report. Born and raised in South Philadelphia, Hemsley's upbringing was overseen by his mother, who worked in a lamp factory. He didn't meet his father until the age of 14 and graduated from Barrett Middle School. For high school, he attended Central High School for 9th grade and Bach Technical High School for 10th. Hemsley left school after the 10th grade and enlisted in the United States Air Force, serving for four years. Before moving to New York to study with Lloyd Richards at the Negro Ensemble Company, Hemsley performed with local groups in Philadelphia. Subsequently, he joined Vanette Carroll's Urban Arts Company and participated in productions such as But Never Jam Today, The Lottery, Old Judge Mose is Dead, Moon on a Rainbow Shawl, Step Lively Boys, Croesus, and The Witch. Hemsley made his Broadway debut in Purley and toured with the show for a year. In the summer of 1972, Hemsley joined the ensemble of the Vinette Carroll musical Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope in Toronto, followed by an American Conservatory Theatre production at the Geary Theatre. During this production, Hemsley performed the solos Looking Over From Your Side in Act One and Sermon in Act Two. Although Hemsley scaled back his acting career, he occasionally joined Isabel Sanford in the mid to late 1990s and the early 2000s, reprising their beloved roles in guest appearances on TV series like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, commercials for The Gap, Old Navy, and Denny's, and at dry cleaning conventions. They also starred in a touring company of the Real Live Jefferson Stage Show in the 1990s. Hemsley and Sanford made a cameo appearance in the film Sprung, 1997, and continued collaborating until Sanford's health declined before her death in 2004. In 2001, Hemsley appeared as a contestant on the celebrity classic TV edition special of ABC's quiz show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? winning $125,000 for his charity. He also made a voice appearance as himself in the Seth MacFarlane animated comedy Family Guy in 2005. His film credits include American Pie Presents, The Book of Love, 2009. In 2011, he reprised his role as George Jefferson for the final time, alongside Marla Gibbs as Florence Johnston on Tyler Perry's House of Pain. Hemsley received induction into the Television Academy Hall of Fame in 2012. James Avery James Avery portrayed the character of mediator in the In the House TV series. James Avery, the robust character actor who established authority as Uncle Phil in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, has passed away. Avery's spokesperson, Cynthia Snyder, informed the Associated Press that Avery passed away on Tuesday in Glendale, California, due to complications arising from open-heart surgery. He was 68. Avery, towering over 6 feet 5 inches, took on the role of Philip Banks, the patriarch and affluent lawyer, later judge, in the popular TV comedy that marked the rise of Will Smith's acting career as his troublemaking nephew. Airing on NBC from 1990 to 1996, the sitcom was set in the Banks Mansion, where Smith's character was sent from Philadelphia during challenging times in his own neighborhood. Avery often expressed that the key to being an actor was to act, and he enjoyed a bustling and varied career before, during, and after Fresh Prince. His television credits encompassed Grey's Anatomy, NYPD Blue, and Dallas while his extensive filmography included Fletch, Night Flyers, and Eight Million Ways to Die. His distinctive voice secured numerous roles, notably as Shredder in the animated TV series Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. As per Snyder, audiences can catch him in the film Wish I Was Here, 
directed by Zach Braff, set to premiere later this month at the Sundance Festival. Avery grew up in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and served in the U.S. Navy in Vietnam during the late 1960s. Upon his return to the U.S., he settled in California, where he studied drama and literature at the University of California at San Diego. He is survived by his wife, Barbara, and stepson, Kevin Waters. Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant portrayed himself in the In the House TV series. On January 26, 2020, a helicopter carrying former professional basketball player Kobe Bryant. His 13-year-old daughter Gianna and seven others crashed in Calabasas, California, approximately 30 miles north of Los Angeles, resulting in the death of everyone on board. Bryant's passing reverberated through the American sports world. Bryant played for the Los Angeles Lakers from 1996 until 2016, securing five NBA championships and the 2008 Most Valuable Player Award, while earning a spot on the All-Star team in 18 of his 20 seasons. By the midpoint of his career, Bryant had solidified his position as one of the greatest players in NBA history, renowned for his clutch shooting, adept defending, strong work ethic, and enduring career. In 2003, he faced accusations of sexual assault, settling out of court, a controversy that led to the loss of some of his most lucrative sponsorship deals. Despite this, he maintained his standing as one of the wealthiest and most cherished American athletes. Beyond his extensive playing career, Bryant was recognized for his philanthropy, various business ventures, and film projects. He authored the 2017 short film, Dear Basketball, which won an Academy Award. Bryant and his daughter, along with the other passengers, were en route to Gianna's basketball game at his Mamba Sports Academy in Thousand Oaks, California. Shortly after takeoff, the helicopter crashed in foggy conditions. The incident shocked sports enthusiasts across the United States and globally. Bryant was slated to host the Grammy Awards that very evening, and the event turned into one of the initial of countless tributes to him and his daughter. In homage to Bryant, the Los Angeles airport, the Empire State Building, and the Burj Khalifa were illuminated in purple and yellow, the Lakers' colors. Shaquille O'Neal, Bryant's longtime teammate, occasional rival, and another of the era's exceptional players, expressed having no words to express the pain he felt at Bryant's demise, while fellow NBA legend Michael Jordan hailed Bryant as one of the greats of the game and a creative force. Stu Nahan Stu Nahan portrayed the character Steve in the In the House TV series. Veteran Los Angeles sports broadcaster Stu Nahan, recognized to film enthusiasts for his roles in the Rocky film series, passed away on Wednesday. He was 81. Kathy Darrington, his daughter, stated that Nahan was in the company of family when he peacefully departed at his residence in Studio City. Since being diagnosed with lymphoma in January 2006, he had been battling the form of cancer. Formerly a minor league hockey goaltender, Nahan served as a sports anchor for three different Los Angeles television stations. He retired from television in 1999 and more recently contributed to pre- and post-game radio shows for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Alongside other roles, Nahan had previously worked on telecasts of the NHL games of the Los Angeles Kings, and Bob Miller, the current Kings broadcaster, acknowledged Nahan's uniqueness. He was always visible at events, and it didn't matter what sport it was. Everybody knew Stu, and not just in Los Angeles. People knew Stu around the country, remarked Miller. We'd go on King's Road trips, and people would say, How's Stu Nahan doing? He knew every player, and he could joke with them. That's kind of the way he did his interviews, a kind of needling the player a little bit and getting the player to loosen up and kind of laugh with him. He was very good there. He was a sportscaster who was at the events. He didn't just stay in the studio. Nahan served as a goalie at McGill College in Montreal and was signed by the NHL's Toronto Maple Leafs in 1946. His playing career concluded when the minor league Los Angeles Monarchs folded in 1952. 
Initiating his broadcasting journey in radio, Nahan provided play-by-play -play commentary for a minor league baseball team in Modesto. His initial nightly sports reports were on a Sacramento television station. Nahan also hosted a children's TV program there, similar to Skipper Stu. Later, in Philadelphia, he was Captain Philadelphia on another children's show and provided play-by-play -play for the NHL's Flyers and the NFL's Eagles. Returning to California in 1968, he commenced his lengthy career as a sportscaster in Los Angeles. Nahan's survivors include his wife, Sandy, children Kathy, Mark, and Kevin from a previous marriage, five grandsons, and seven great-grandchildren. Peter Dennis. Peter Dennis portrayed the violinist in the television show. Dennis passed away on April 18, 2009, in Shadow Hills, Los Angeles, California, USA. Born in Dorking, Surrey, he was the son of Michael Henry Dennis, a mechanical engineer, and Violet Francis Lockwood, a homemaker. He had two brothers, Michael and David, and his early schooling took place in a Roman Catholic convent. He continued his initial studies on Portobello Road, London, at the North Kensington Secondary School until the age of 14. The next four years were dedicated to training as an accountant and surveyor. While working at T.S. Appleton & Son El Aladiao in Shepherd's Bush, he was called up for national service in the British Army. Upon graduating from Raida, he returned to the Birmingham Rep to take on numerous leading roles. He later performed at the Everyman Theatre in Liverpool, the Liverpool Repertory Theatre, and in London's West End. Additionally, he became a familiar face on British television, featuring in The Avengers and various other shows. On October 14, 1976, his one-man show, Bother, The Brain of Pooh, premiered at the ADC Theatre, Cambridge, commemorating the 50th anniversary of A.A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh. The show included selected readings from When We Were Very Young, Winnie the Pooh, Now We Are Six, and The House at Pooh Corner. At the invitation of Anna Strasberg, head of the actor's studio, Bother, made its American debut in December 1986 at the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute in Hollywood. It received the Drama Logue Award and the Los Angeles Theater Award. Dennis continued to perform Bother over the ensuing decades at more than 80 venues across America and Europe, from the Hollywood Bowl under conductor George Daugherty to the Palace of Westminster in London at the Prime Minister's invitation. His American television career expanded with appearances on popular series such as Friends, Murphy Brown, Alias, Seinfeld, Prime Suspect, and Murder, she wrote. Notable moments in his film career include Sideways and Shrek. Dennis was often seen wearing bow ties, a distinctive feature in many of his roles. Throughout this series, we've explored, learned, and grown together, and I'm truly humbled by the shared experiences we've had. Your comments, likes, and shares have made this channel a vibrant space for discussion and connection. While we bid farewell to this chapter, Remember that every ending marks a new beginning. Life is an ongoing adventure, filled with endless possibilities. So let's embrace the future with open hearts and minds. As we close this chapter, let's look forward to new horizons, fresh ideas, and exciting endeavors. Remember, the journey doesn't end here. It evolves. So until we meet again on another adventure, take care, stay inspired, and keep spreading positivity. Thank you for the memories, the laughter, and the shared moments. This is not a goodbye, but a see you later. Wishing you all the best on your individual journeys.